Bonjour Genie Engineers, welcome to my problem a day series. In this video, we're going to calculate the magnitude and the direction of the resultant force of three coplanar forces. Now, if you're for the first time and you just want to learn about engineering or just how to engineer a better life, don't forget to subscribe and make sure you hit the bell so you don't miss out on future videos. Now, let's get started. Oh yeah, everybody now. Okay guys, so we're giving three coplanar forces and we need to calculate the resultant force which means the summation of these three forces and also its location where is it located with respect to the x-axis so the first thing we're going to do here is break down the vector forces into the x and the y component and then we're going to calculate the summation of the forces on the x summation of the forces on the y and from those two we can actually determine the resultant force and lastly, we're going to determine the direction of the resultant force. So let's first break down the first vector. So we have F1 is equal to 600 newtons, but that one doesn't really have the Y component. Only on the X component, it's just going to be F1 and that's in the X direction. Now for the F2, so let me uh, draw it here. So F2, I have F2 going this way, right? Now, my theta is here, so you could do either way. You could either use this side and then uh, draw the forces this way. This is my F2y, this is my F2x, and use this theta, 6c. Or you could do 30 because this is a right angle, so you could just do 90 minus 6c gives you 30, and you could just use this side. So either way, you will still get the same answer. So let's determine F2x in terms of F2. So I have F2x is equal to F2 and I'm going to have sine 60 because it's the opposite. Now my F2y is going to be F2 cosine 60 because it's the adjacent. So I talked a lot about this in my previous videos but I'm going to show you guys a little bit what it means. So when we have sine theta, as you guys know from trigonometry, is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse. And cosine theta is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, right? So here I have sine 60 is equal to the opposite, which is F2x over my hypotenuse is F2, right? So if I want to find, calculate for F2x, I have F2x is equal to F2 sine theta. And so this is why I always go, okay, so if you have opposites, you use sine. If you have adjacent, you use cosine. If you start thinking about it like that, you're going to be way faster during the exam than trying to derive it each time like this. Uh, and then same thing for cosine. So I have F2y adjacent is this one. So I have F2y over F2. So F2y is equal to F2 cosine theta. And that's exactly what we did here. So let's do now F3. So F3 is interesting because we weren't really given the angle, but we can still use the triangle that we were given. Okay, so you could actually determine theta here if you want, if you're more comfortable with theta. It doesn't really take you that much time. So what you would do is tangent theta, as you guys know, is equal to the opposite over adjacent, right? So theta is equal to tangent inverse of 3 which is the opposite and then over 4 and this will give you the angle it really doesn't take that much time if you're comfortable with this method you can go ahead and do that but in here I'm going to actually keep it 3 4 so that way you guys can see how we use use it it's really easy as well so this is 3 right and this is 4 now here we have 5 because I determined this by using you know 3 squared plus 4 squared the square root of that gives you 5 now let's break F3, so I have, this is my F3x, and this is my F3y. So let's write these uh, two terms in terms of F3. So F3x is going to be F3, and we're going to multiply it by 4, because that's my x component, and divided by the hypotenuse. So you always divide by the hypotenuse. For this one, you just determine if it's x, then you use the x component. If it's y, you use the y component. It's really simple. So for F3y, we're going to do F3 times, I have 3 because that's the y component, and divided by the hypotenuse, which is 5. So now we have all my x and the y components breaking down. Now we can go ahead and set up our equilibrium equations. So let's start with the summation of the forces on the x. Let's pick this to be positive. It doesn't matter which way you pick, just as long as you stick to the same sign to the end of your problem. Don't switch the signs in the middle of the problem. 
this is equal to fx. I have fx is equal to, I have minus f3x because it's going the opposite direction. So I have minus f3 times 4 over 5. Then I have minus f1 because it's also going to the opposite direction, which is 600 newtons. You know, let's just substitute this one f3 400 so that we save time. So that's 400. And then I have plus 450, this one right here, sine 60, because it's going in the positive direction. Now for this one, we said it's going the other direction, which is negative. So I have plus 450 times sine 60. So this is equals to minus 530 newtons. So this is my fx. Okay, so now let's do fy. So I have the summation of the forces on the y equals to fy. Let's select this to be positive. So I have fy is equal to, so we have f2y, which is 450 times cosine 60. And then I have plus f3, which is 400 times 3 over 5. We're doing this component. And that's pretty much all the forces that we have on the y direction. For f1, we don't really have the y, we just have x and we already used it here. So this is equals to 465 newtons. So these are my two forces. And now to find the resultant force, let's actually draw this. So if we would have to draw this, I have minus fx, which is going this way. This is fx, right? And I have plus... 465, which is, this is my Fy, right? This is my resultant force. So if I want to calculate this, we do Fr is equal to the square root of Fy squared plus Fx squared. So that would give me my uh, hypotenuse, this vector right here. So let's plug in those numbers. So I have minus 530 squared plus 465 squared. So this is your fx, this is fy, so this is equals to 705 newtons. So this is your resultant force. Now, if I want to calculate this data, it's really easy. If this is fy, I have this is fy, right? Theta or tangent theta is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, just like we said earlier. So this is equals to fy over fx. So theta is equal to tangent inverse of fy which is 465 divided by 530, and this is equals to 41.3 degrees. So if you keep a negative here, that would give you a negative answer, but it does just, it will tell you that your theta is in this coordinate and it's not on this coordinate right here. But theta, it would still be 41.3 degrees from here to where your FR is. Okay, guys, so on the next video, we're going to calculate the reaction forces of a giving beam. So make sure you hit the bell so you get notified when I release the video. And if you have any questions, please leave it in the comments below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and make sure you share with your friends who might find it helpful. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you soon. À la prochaine. Oh yeah, everybody now.